We traveled with our new rigging by bus and by car from San Francisco to the Maya Riviera over a span of six days and 3,200 miles. We started to install the soft stuff first, the running rigging. Robbie removed the roller furler while I was away, and the mast is currently being held up by a halyard. So we want to get some safe new halyards on the mast to hoist ourselves up and install the new standing rigging. Some of our standing rigging will also be constructed from high-tech line. Our rig then ends up being a partially synthetic rig after all. Robbie started splicing together the running backstays. So this is not a guide on how to splice your ropes. It is more of how we do it on our boat. The way I do my splices is from interpretation of the rope manufacturer's guidelines. Most manufacturers will provide a guide on how to splice their ropes in particular. The markers that I have put on the line were simply to avoid having to use a marker that will stain the rope permanently. The reason to use a splice over a knot, especially on a high-tech line, is that a splice will remove much less strength from the total strength of the rope as comparison to a knot. A splice will remove 10% maximum of the total strength of the rope, while it can be anywhere between 25-30% to 30 of the total strength of the rope will be lost to a knot. There are different types of splices. They depend on what type of rope you're using. Whether it is a core dependent, it's a multi-braid, or it's a three-strand rope. The type of, of splice we are doing now is a class 2 splice for a core dependent rope, where the cover is only used as a chafe guard and sun protection for the loop created by the splice. As opposed to other types of splices where the cover is not used at all, or the cover and the core are tucked totally back in, which provides strength to the rope. Another aspect to ensure the strength of a rope is the tapering of the line. The smoother your tapering of your tail is, the stronger the splice will be. Bumps and irregularities in your tapering usually will become the point of break of the rope. In my opinion, the hardest and most strenuous part of a splice is tucking back the splice into the cover. A little bit of whipping just there now with the end and you burn, cut and burn off the end and that's that. It can be particularly difficult for some ropes like we discovered like D2 Club which we just purchased while it is relatively easy on ropes like Crystalline that our running back stays are made. For our running backs we are using crystalline, which has a very low stretch factor because it's made of Vectran and we were lucky enough to find offcuts that were the right length, so we managed to get it pretty cheap. All of our halyards, well, all of our rope right now on a boat has been D2 Club, which is a mix of performance slash budget. It provides a great strength for uh, a budget rope. so. We highly recommend something on the mid-range for cruising boats. As I finish ripping up the splice, I should mention, it becomes a lot more difficult to splice all the ropes, which is the main drawback of making splices. We controversially decided to disassemble the roller furler and begin to construct a solar panel rack with its foils. The furler was technically still functioning, but in order to simplify the measuring of the new rigging, and also because the furler may have contributed to the bird caging of the previous headstay, we were not planning on reinstalling it or even selling it. Finally, the time had come to start climbing the mast and installing the new bling. More than a year in the making, the project of re-rigging our new boat was finally coming into bloom, and it felt like a Christmas present to ourselves. <laughs> and just disintegrated. The 
The strongly jury-rigged pieces that had held things together for the previous owner and for us reluctantly loosened. And then on a shaky framework, Robbie hoisted me up first to install the lower stays. Hanging from my chair, I had a length of rope to pull up the new stays and to let down the old ones. Nothing is bent at a weird angle. In hindsight, it may have been easier to have two separate ropes to pull up and let down. But I worked a bit on my juggling skills and managed to insert the new lollipop terminals into the backing plates. Ooh, big ray! And everything fit like a glove. Above the first spreaders, stainless steel parts started to become frozen. The screws at the second spreader tips would not allow me to install the new upper shrouds. And according to Robbie's experience trying to remove the headstay and roller furler, we already knew that the pins at the very top were frozen as well. We recruited our friend Tomat to make sure that Robbie would go up to the top of the mast with a little more counterweight at the bottom. First I put in the pulley and, and, and then I, I, can, I can bring up whatever I want. He wanted to free up the frozen pins and screws so that we could get some more stays on. The toggle, the brass punch, and uh, my gloves. I like the system of stuff to bring stuff in and out. Okay, deja la box aquí, agárralo. Ooh, you found both of them, nice. We have learned to tie down as many things as possible when up the mast. I should have a knife with me. In case the mast falls in the water. It's worth the extra few moments to tie one small knot. Remind me next time we do this, just need to put some plywood over the glass windows. If I drop anything, it's just gonna shatter. Hi there. Woo! Mia, me cago justo en la bolsa. With the old welded toggle and frozen pin freed, we could finally check to see if the new toggles would fit. Oh, yes. Well, the forward toggle is going to fit. The back one is not. Because the forward one is 31 millimeters and the back one is 40. No, the back. Yeah, the back one, we might have to cut out a little bit of aluminum in the back. Just a little bit, not much. Uh, Okay, me puede bajar la mochila al primer, a la segunda crocieta. Then Tomás and I let Robbie down to the top spreaders and he freed up the tips. With the spreader tips unfrozen, we could at least then install the upper shrouds for now. And I would go up again because the business of removing shrouds and replacing them is best done under a lighter load. Now the trick here again is to tie anything that you can off on ropes and or halyards. 
So we like to always have two ropes or halyards attached to the human at any given time. We have two halyards functioning as head stays and an extra gray rope for sending stuff up and down. So that would mean I would tie myself off at the top with a little safety extra rope, taking that second halyard off of myself and sending it back down and then using that one halyard to stop the mast from moving sideways when removing the cap. Okay, the old cable on this side is tied to me. We take the old cap shroud out. Pop in the new one. Okay, new one is in. Send the old one down. And attempt to line up the new cap shroud with the spreader tips. Which was a surprisingly good core workout. Okay, it went in, but it went in the raw, like it was in the forward hole, and now it's in the back hole. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, perfect, yeah, total bien. Yep. Once the new stay was lightly tightened, Robbie moved the safety halyard to the opposite side, and we started the process again by tying off the old shroud, taking it out, Okay. Popping the new one in and sending the old one down. All we need is the back stay and the fore stay, which require a little bit of milling of some pins here. Along with the back stay and the head stay, which still need to be installed, we also have to devise an attachment point for the running backstays. We're looking forward to showing you those projects next. Every project here interconnects. The solar panel rack slash bimini will help the installation of the new solar panels, allowing better charge of our batteries. And the batteries will be better connected with proper battery gauge wire, which will then in turn allow for enough power to utilize this mini inverter sent to us by a viewer to charge my computer without using landlubber power. And finally, when using my computer, which only has one small port, I was sent a USB type C SD card hub to make the transfer of files from my camera to computer more easy. All made possible by our viewers. Mm -hmm.